I gotta hand it to you guys, if you want something, you go and get it. I asked for a thousand likes on my review of Riot, and I said I would review All We Know Is Falling if you did that, and you did it in 24 hours. So, here we go, again. What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the debut studio album by Paramore, one of my absolute favorite bands. The album is called All We Know Is Falling. It came out in 2005 and it is centered around like somebody leaving, somebody moving out of your life. And this person for them, for Haley Williams and Josh Farrow, the primary songwriters, that was Jeremy Davis, the bassist. He actually moved on from the band not only this time, but obviously again in 2014 after the self-titled album came out. Now, this time, obviously, he came back, he realized that he messed up, maybe he should actually be in a band that is probably going to thrive, and that was a good decision for him for a while to come. But at the time of this album's recording, they didn't know what was going on. They were just starting to get some notoriety, they got signed, and then, of course, the world gets turned on its head because one of your founding members leaves. So what do you do from there? The album cover actually has a shadow in front of that couch, and that shadow is supposed to be that one person and just uh, it's kind of a memoriam to him and it must have been probably pretty awkward especially whenever he came back to be playing these songs that were kind of about him inadvertently at least a good handful of them and obviously there's other themes on there as well there's a lot of relationship centric stuff a lot of songs that were very much uh, kind of dated to their time with that mid-2000s emo thing that was going on some of the tracks like the single emergency really call that to mind the guitar tones the vocal pattern and I really do feel like obviously Haley Williams was still coming into her own as a vocalist. This is not her best vocal album by any means. This is, does not have the best guitar riffs and definitely not the bass tones either. There's not really any memorable bass lines here. In fact, that's probably one of my biggest complaints with their debut is the fact that it lacks those meaty bass lines that really either stand out or else pack a punch and add something to the tunes. The vocals do fall a bit flat in places, unfortunately, and some of the songs aren't quite as interesting and that's why this actually is my least favorite album from Paramore, and that's me getting my criticisms out in the open first, just so I can be honest about how I feel. Even though I love the majority of these songs, or at least really like a lot of them, there's a few that I don't care for as much, like Franklin. Emergency really hasn't done a ton for me over time, especially since it was one of the singles that's kind of played out for me at this point. There are some great songs here, like Brighter has these massive guitars, a big hook on it, I love that. Whoa, is catchy as hell. Even though it is simplistic, I like the kind of stuttered guitars, especially on that. Here We Go Again is another great one that really mixes things up with a varied guitar pattern and showed that they had a knack for songwriting and doing things in a catchy manner from the beginning of their career. Now, there is one song that really stands out, has really just become a fan favorite at this point, and it's the final track. It's called My Heart. This is one that has totally grown on me, and it totally caught me off guard, I guess, because there's screams at the end of it from Josh Farrow. That's not something that Paramore were really known for, especially later on in their career. I mean, screamo mixed with the whole pop punk emo alternative thing, not exactly something they were familiar with on albums from Riot all the way to the present. And here they had screams on the final song on the record. And it was actually kind of cool the way that it matched up with Haley's voice on this thing. I can't say it's one of my absolute favorite Paramore songs, but I respect them for trying something like this, even though I guess that was a little bit more cool and trendy at the time. Conspiracy is another cool song on this record. It feels like Williams has uh, the feeling of somebody plotting against her or else a group of people turning on her. And I like how the vocals kind of descend on this one. They kind of trickle in and it's different. It makes it stand out from the pack because I will say on All We Know Is Falling, a lot of these songs just kind of fall into the routine of, you know, the slower opening guitars, super big hook, shiny, glossy kind of feel to the guitars and everything, and then breaking it into the predictable bridge. And chorus. not saying that is a bad thing and it makes the these songs bad and inherently in and of themselves, but I'm saying I like it whenever they break the mold and actually add something new into the mix. And for me, I feel like Conspiracy does that. And I'm thinking now if Haley could hear herself singing that back in 2005 and thinking if people were out to get her then or whatever it was that was going on, 
just look 10 years into the future and damn, I'm surprised this one hasn't worked its way back into the set list. I did say that the bass lines were kind of lacking overall on this record, but there is one where you can actually kind of hear it. It's called Never Let This Go, and it has similar vibes to the track and spirits that I was talking about with the whole vocal approach. It's very unique in that sense, and you can actually hear kind of this gray looming bass in the background of the track, and the guitars here are different. The way that they're tuned, it's not just the chugging and the riffing and everything like that. It's a little bit slower. It allows us to get to know Haley better as a vocalist to see what she's made of put up against a slower song, and obviously she started knocking those out of the park on following records like When It Rains, The Only Exception, 26, and I'm so glad that she's come into her own, but you can see the humble start, the humble beginnings of Paramore. So take this album for what you will. Maybe it's not their best. Some people will absolutely love it because they are just going to be stuck in wanting Paramore to make albums like this and Riot over and over and over again. But me personally, those are probably two of my least favorite albums from the band because I like to see them mature. And while their newest isn't my favorite by any means, I've still like to see them trying things from all different angles. I hope you enjoyed my review of All We Know Is Falling. This is still a good record, even though it is my least favorite from them. I do have my ranked episode for Paramore coming out very, very soon, and that will close out the cycle of Paramore-themed videos surrounding After Laughter and its release. For me personally, All We Know Is Falling, I think that there definitely has been a lot of replay factor to it over the years. It's grown on me, especially in the months leading up to After Laughter. I started listening to it a whole lot more, and I've unlocked a lot more of what I like about the album even though I used to kind of dismiss it a little bit more. So for me, I'm going to give this thing a light four out of five. Still rocking out to everything from all we know and pressure to conspiracy in my heart. Still a very good album. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section down below. And if you're able to, support me on Patreon in the annotation right over there, my playlist of Paramore themed videos right here, or another recent review from the channel right there. Socials in the description, and I'll see you very soon right here on ARTV.